Countless tennis players struggle hitting their best shots during matches. So if you can relate to feeling tight, tentative, and short during match play, even though in practice you feel incredible, then click the like button and let's dive right into this special lesson that's gonna expose one of the big reasons why that happens. We're gonna tackle this big, big problem by first doing a little bit of a case study. This is some footage of Roger Federer practicing at Cincinnati. I shot this footage years ago, and this is kind of part of his warm up. And I want you to pay close attention here. Watch his swings, and I want you to look for three things. His intensity, it's like general like sense of like how much he's trying, how much effort he's putting into his swings. I want you to notice the speed that his racket is moving. And then I'd like you to notice the length of his swings. How would you characterize those three elements? Because this is what players struggle with, is their intensity, their swing speed, and their length of swing being totally different between practice play and match play. This is Federer practicing right now. And now let's go ahead and shift gears and take a look at the same practice session when he was playing some points. Now, this is Federer, the same day, same practice session, same practice partner, same everything, same camera. And the difference is now he's playing points. And I'd like you to watch for those same three elements. Intensity, swing speed, or how fast the, the racket moves, and length of swing, how long his strokes are. Now, keep in mind, this is match play. So occasionally he's getting put in a defensive position. So that is obviously going to change the length of his swing and the speed of his swing. But I, I just kind of want you to get a sense for the overall kind of average across those three things. Intensity, swing speed, length of swing. Now, what would you say? Let me know in the comments down below. Would you say he's about the same intensity as his practice or his warm up? Would you say he's less intense or more intense? For me, watching his movement, his racket head speed, how he's moving his body, his intensity has definitely gone up. Now he's still smooth and relaxed and calm, but the way he's accelerating the racket into the ball here is definitely a little bit higher revs, if you will, than when he was just kind of hitting back and forth and warming up. So now that we've seen this example, let's go ahead and go to a different player. This is a player that came to work with me on my court recently. He really badly wanted a solution on his backhand. And we spent a whole morning together. And this is him warming up. This is him getting moving and kind of showing me, okay, here's how I hit my backhand right now. So he's hitting with the ball machine. And I just told him to just get comfortable, hit a bunch of backhands. And so this is essentially his kind of normal backhand swing. And I want you to go ahead and check out those same three characteristics that we looked at with Federer. Overall intensity, racket head speed, and swing length. And I don't want you to compare this to Federer. We're going to compare this to himself in a moment. So that obviously, like if you look at my intensity, swing speeds, and swing length compared to Federer, there's a big difference. There is for just about every player that you see on your local courts. I'm not a professional player either, so there's a big difference between me and Federer. But relative to this player, check out those three elements, and then we're going to go ahead and check out a little bit different clip. Now, here's that same player playing a few points against me, and this has become a standard part of my teaching. I, I don't just record a player hitting against another coach, like, oh, let's do some cross-court backhands or with a ball machine. I make sure to grab footage of a player playing some points to see the same strokes so I can compare their practice strokes versus their match strokes. So here's some backhands that he hit during those points, and I want you to watch those same three elements. His overall intensity, his swing speed with his racket, and his swing length with his racket. And can you see a difference between his practice ones and his match ones? And would you say his match ones are higher intensity, about the same intensity, or lower intensity, racket head speed and length, than when he was practicing, or just kind of hitting with the, with the ball machine? So, and we'll put a little bit side, because I don't expect you to remember exactly what he looked like, you know, a minute or two minutes ago. So we're gonna put a couple side by side as well. But for me, analyzing them, there's a clear difference in his intensity, and it's lower here in match play. With Federer, he was more intense, greater racket head speed in his match hitting compared to his practice or warm up hitting. And with many, many amateur players, I'm not bagging on this player, this is an incredibly widespread pro, uh, problem. So if you can relate to this, then don't worry, like, you're not alone. Most players are more careful, more tentative, shorter 
and a little bit slower in match play. So what causes this? We're gonna talk about it and I'm also gonna give you a drill that you can do at home to start fighting against it and start hitting your best shots in match play and not saving them just for the practice court. So you know what they say in the 12 step program, like the first step is admit you have a problem. And a lot of that is just being aware of it, just like realizing it. And many of you probably already realize you have this issue. If you can relate to this, do me a favor and click the, the like button. It really helps these videos out a lot. If you're watching me right now and you're like, oh, I'm sure I hit just the same quality shots and matches as I do in practice, I challenge you to record yourself in practice and record yourself while playing points, just like I did for my students. Just get your phone, set it up, just prop it up against the back fence, record yourself during warm-up hitting shots, and then watch yourself playing competitive points and see if there isn't a drop-off in intensity, racket head speed, and swing length. For most amateur players, there is. So once you've identified that there's a problem, step number two is to pinpoint it and train it in a very specific way. And I'm about to show you how to do that. It's not good enough to just tell yourself, oh, I need to be more confident. I need to be more assertive. I need to keep my racket head speed up. Like that's all great to give yourself those reminders. But in my experience, what it really takes is purposeful training using specific types of drills to grow the confidence, to grow the awareness of racket head speed and under pressure, be able to swing your best swings. Not just any old swing that you know is gonna make it in the court, but actually hit your best shots. So let's go to the court and I'll show you exactly how to do that. So here I am in a practice session. I'm here with Mark Sansett. Make sure that you check out his YouTube channel if you're not already subscribed there. We've already gone through a warm up, and now rather than just bash balls back and forth, which for most players is gonna be their comfort zone, we've set up some specific targets. So as he and I rally back and forth, we're literally physically trying to land our shots on top of each person's target. And that target's about seven, maybe eight feet inside the baseline and about four feet or so inside the sideline. So right away, there's an objective and there's like a pass fail for every single swing we, we make. And so as we go uh, back and forth, we can hit forehands or backhands. And our goal is just simply to hit a uh, shot that's competitive for us, that would be a quality shot, and do our best to direct the uh, direction, the depth. And the biggest thing here is going to be confidence of swing. If you come out here to hit the target and you start hitting like this, and Mark hits his competitive shot, and I just kind of like, oh, I wanna hit the target, I might get close that way, but it's not helping me in match play. If all I do is try to check the box and hit the target without practicing a competitive quality shot, then I'm always gonna have my practice personality and my match personality. So as Mark and I rally, I'm focusing on swing speed and making sure that every swing I take feels comfortable and confident. And that means length of swing, and it means acceleration. If at any point I feel that I'm starting to tighten up and just kind of guide the ball, I really just kind of want to check myself and go back to swinging confidently again. So this is layer number one, is just adding some accountability by putting a physical target in the way. Now we're gonna take a step further outside of our comfort zone, add a little bit of additional pressure. We put a ball on top of each other's cone and each time that I hit Mark's cone anywhere, I get one point. If I hit his cone and the ball falls off, then it's worth two points, and we're gonna play a game up to five. So now we've introduced the idea of a winner and a loser, which automatically makes a lot of players go into their shell, be careful and tentative, and my goal is gonna be to monitor my swing speed and maintain a good quality shot. So let's play a game up to five. Ready? Yep. All right, here we go. No, <laughs> no way. Oh man. Sorry. <laughs> That, see, Mark's clutch, <laughs> first shot when it really, all I had to do was tell him we were keeping track of score. All right, so uh, zero two. Oh. Whoa. Okay, so one point, one to two. Here we go. First player to five, well, one by one. All right. Yeah, all right. Mark only needs one more point, so any touch wins it at this point. <sighs> one to four. 
I need some more, I need some of those two-pointers. I can get a bigger cone if you want. <laughs> Here you go. Come yep. on. Oh! Come on, come on. Two-pointer takes it. Nice ball. Oh, come on, Ian. Come on, focus, focus. Oh, wow. William telled it. Just knocked the ball right off. So there you go. Now, we're gonna add even more pressure to it in our third variation here. We're gonna play to five again. This time, the loser's gonna have to do 20 push-ups. All right, here we go. So game to five again. Same, uh, same rules. Yep. By the way, no scoring points off the feed. For those of you at home, that's a cheap shot. <laughs> Frick. Just stay, up, just stay up there. <laughs> you can just stay in your home. All right, zero two. Nice shot. Get no. It. Come on. Two two. <sighs> Prize for YouTube's best pecs are on the line. <laughs> uh, sorry. No problem. Ah, oh, shoot. That's a killer. Match right, point. Two, four. Any hit for Mark takes it. Uh, get it. Come on. Next Sudden hit. <laughs> four, Next four, hit. right? No, you Next. won, because it won by one. No, it's four, four. Four, four? Yeah, 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 yeah. we both got a two-pointer. Get it. No. Uh. Oh, come on. Yes! <laughs> uh. All right, 20 push ups. 15. 18. 19. 20. Respect. I'm broken too. That's how, you, that's how you do it, ladies and gentlemen. So notice how we've taken a progressive approach here from just having a target, period, monitoring swing speed and confidence, then keeping track of score, having a winner and a loser, again, monitoring confidence, making sure you're hitting a high quality shot, and then finally putting some kind of consequence on the line, which adds even more pressure. You can kind of pick and choose, like where do you feel like you are in your competitive development right now? This is how you can start to fuse together your practice self and your match self. So you don't hit all your best shots in practice and in a match you're completely different. This is how you need to train so you can start hitting your best shots when it actually matters, when you're actually keeping track of score and who wins and who loses. If this was helpful, do me a favor and click the like button. Big thank you to Mark Sanset for helping me out with this drill. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.